Hi, this is Mrs. Nelson. We're looking at illustrative math for sixth grade. This is unit seven, lesson four, ordering rational numbers. The objective states, I can use phrases like greater than, less than, and opposite to compare rational numbers. I can compare and order rational numbers. We're looking at activity 4.3, comparing ports on a line. Number one says to use each of the following terms at least once to describe or compare the values of M, N, P, and R. Before we get started, I'm just going to acknowledge a few things. These are negative numbers, and they are uh, to the left or less than zero, and they get smaller as we move left. Um, on the right-hand side, we have positive numbers because they are greater than zero or to the right of zero. And as we move to the right, we get greater as we go. Lesser over on this side. Um, so let's go ahead and use some phrases to describe um, these points and how they compare to one another. So we want to use greater than. We could start with the one that's the greatest of them all, which is R. And so we could say that R is greater than P. We could also say R is greater than N and R is greater than M. But we could choose any of these that's to the right of another. We could even say that N is greater than M. Uh, less than. We could start with the one that is the least of these points on this number line, m. m is less than each of these. So we could state that about all of them. But anything that's to the left of another point would be less than, so we could even say that p is less than r, even though p is greater than n. Opposite of or opposites. Remember, opposites are not only on opposite sides of zero, so one's going to be to the left and one's going to be to the right, but they're also the same distance from zero. So m is the same distance from zero as p. So m and p are opposites. A negative number, either m and n, both of those two points are negative numbers because they're to the left of zero, so I could just say m is a negative number. Not negative hashtag, but negative number. I'm sure your math teachers have all made that joke. Uh, number two, tell what the value of each point would be if p is two and a half. So if p right here was two and a half, let me erase some of this so it's easier to see. If p is equal to two and a half, I want to know what are my tick marks marking. So I have one, two, three, four, five tick marks before I get to p. So five equal groups and two and a half. Each of these tick marks must be one half. So in that case, this would be three, three and a half, and four. And this would be negative one half, negative one, negative one and a half, negative two, negative two and a half. And I should have just known since m and p are opposites that it would be negative two and a half. So those would be my values. If n was negative four tenths, again I want to decide what are the values of each of these tick marks. So to go from zero to n I go two spaces. So two equal divisions in four tenths. Each of these must be uh, two tenths at a time. So if that's four tenths, this is six, eight, 10 tenths or negative one. If I know that m is negative one, then p must be positive one. And then I'll continue to count by two tenths at a time. 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, one and six tenths to be more precise with my language. If n is equal to negative four tenths. Um, we could continue going. Um, in looking at these tick marks and how it might be divided and determine what the other values would be. If we consider how many jumps does it take to get to that particular point, we can use that as a, a divisor to help us figure out what each of those tick marks is equal to. Again, our objective was I can use phrases like greater than, less than, and opposite to compare rational numbers. I can compare and order rational numbers. Thanks for watching.